Hello friends, welcome to this presentation on Seamus Heaney born in 1939 and died in 2013. We will explore the historical and literary context first then move on to the life of Seamus Heaney, examine two of his poems Digging and Death of Your Naturalist, give an analysis of these two poems poetically, rhetorically, linguistically and then conclude our discussion. Let us look into the historical and literary context first. Historically, Ireland was always oppressed and suppressed and that led to finally, this 1922 independence from England. Ireland got independence in 1922, but left one part of Ireland to Britain. That part of Ireland was full of Protestants and our poet Seamus Heaney happened to live in Northern Ireland. This land has always had lots of conflicts between Catholics and Protestants and we have lot of Irish poets who have contributed to British literature or English literature greatly. Two poets we have here W. V. Yeats and Seamus Heaney who won Nobel prizes. These poets deal with the themes of identity, heritage, language and religion apart from others. During the 1960s and 70s, Irish poetry became rich and strong. We have a number of distinguished poets in this category, Ewan Bolin, Derek Mahan, Michael Longley and Paul Muldoon. Seamus Heaney became a major 20th century Irish poet, dramatist and translator with a large number of publications. He was a Catholic in a Protestant Northern Ireland. He was born in a farm, he got a scholarship that is why he always calls himself a scholarship boy. He was a scholarship boy from the farm to a professor at Harvard University, Oxford University. Later on, he also won this Nobel Prize for Poetry. He was influenced by Ted Hughes and Robert Frost. Some of the common subjects that he deals with in his poems are his own personal life, father, rural life, farming, nature, Irish culture and politics. He he has said so many things about poetry, we have two quotations here. The first one is, poets themselves are finders and keepers, that their vocation is to look after art and life by being discoverers and custodians of the unlooked for. The next quotation is, if poetry and the arts can do anything, they can fortify your life, your inwardness. Now you can understand the sensibility the spirit of Seamus Heaney's poetry which won him this Nobel Prize. Look in, turn in, fortify yourself, strengthen yourself and become the finder and keeper of the society, the culture, the world, the earth. We have selected two poems from Seamus Heaney. These poems appear in the volume called Death of a Naturalist. It was published in 1966. These two poems are very famous from this volume. First is Digging, it is a poem of 31 lines in 8 short stanzas dealing with 3 generations of diggers, the father, the grandfather and the speaker poet. It shows the generational diggings. Then we have Death of a Naturalist, this is a poem of 33 lines in 2 stanzas portraying the speaker's childhood experience of a flax dam and the frogs which threatened him with their foul smell and menacing croak, killing the curiosity of the child in the poet. First, let us see digging. Unfortunately, we will not be able to read the whole poem here. So, we have to go to Poetry Foundation or to our textbook for the full poem. We have summarized some extracts which we cannot put them here. So, we have some selections and some summary of the left out omitted passages and then we will have our discussions. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound, when the spade sinks into the gravelly ground, my father digging, I look down. In the omitted part, the poet looks upon his father in awe 
for the beauty and the rhythm of digging. Again in the omitted part the poet admires the professional gear of his father as he was digging. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked loving their cool hardness in our hands. By God the old man could handle a spade just like his old man that is his father that is in this case the poet's grandfather. Again we have an omitted passage. Heaney remembers a day in Toner's Bog that is a place where they had the land when he went to his grandfather with milk in a bottle which he had not closed properly. Then he refers to the grandfather. He straightened up to drink it then fell to right away nicking and slicing neatly heaving swords over his shoulder going down and down for the good tough digging. Again we have an omitted passage. The smell and sound of the potatoes remain with the poet to make him feel his generational and professional difference from his father and grandfather. The poet chose to study in a university on scholarship and become a poet to work with his pen and words. So at last he says, but I have no spade to follow men like them between my finger and my thumb the squared pen rests I will dig with it. Let us see the thematic contrast in this poem between old age that is grandfather and father and then youth son between farming and writing spade and pen earth on the one hand and paper or mind on the other hand past and present work and rest belonging and alienation. Seamus Heaney left his land to a university and he left his culture but then he always remembers his past, his parents, his grandparents, his people, his land, his culture, his language everything he remembers and he remembers everything in contrast to what he is now. He is a poet, he uses a pen not a spade. So, we have this great theme of digging the land and the mind, the language and culture. Now you can understand finders and keepers. For me it appears that the words are burial grounds, poets bury their experiences in poems and we as readers dig them for our own understanding. Some of the poetic devices we can find in this poem are metaphor in digging of the land and the mind that is history, time, space even. Similarly we have in snug as a gun, metaphor we have in the coarse boot nestled on the leg, another simile in just like his old man that is human simile one person is compared with another person. We have alliteration and assonance in nicking and slicing neatly heaving swords. It is a beautiful line in this poem full of rhythm, full of music. Nicking we have alliteration na neat we have alliteration again in sa slicing and swords then we have the assonance in e king slicing he wing and then we also have another case of assonance in neat and heave. Such a line is rare to find it is beautiful. Then we have metaphor in between my finger and my thumb the squared pen rests I will dig with it. The whole poem can be considered something like an allegory of poetry reading and writing as digging. Now let us come to rhyme, rhythm and meter in this poem. The whole form of the poem is free verse, so we may not be able to expect much uh, rhyme, but then we have a pair of words sound and ground rhyming in this poem. Then when we come to the rhythm we find an alteration between I am spondy and trochy. The meter of this poem varies from 4 syllables to 12 syllables indicating diameter and alexandrine that is 6 feet. 
we also have cesura, enjambment and in stop line in this passage that we have quoted here. He rooted out tall tops buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked loving their cool hardness in our hands. We have underlined all those I am spondy trachy examples. He root that is a case of I am spondy in tall tops and trachy in loving. We have this enjambment in edge deep to scatter and then full stop at the end that is in stop line. To give an overall impression of this poem, let us look at these points. Heaney recalls an image of his father digging and another image of his grandfather digging a turf. Both men use their spade with commitment and contentment to grow potatoes from the land. Instead of a spade, a pen squats between the speaker's finger and his thumb with which the speaker poet promises to dig in his mind and Irish life to write his poems. He in his digging is also beautiful and beneficial to him and to his community and to the whole world as he has written plenty of sonorous poems to win millions of hearts and many awards including the Nobel Prize. This is an authentic, memorable, reflective and lyrical poem of his agricultural family and his poetic life. We move on to the next poem, Death of a Naturalist. Again, we will not be able to read the whole poem for copyright reasons. Please go to Poetry Foundation web page or to the textbook. All year the flax dam festered in the heart of the townland, green and heavy headed flax had rotted there, weighted down by huge swords, daily it sweltered in the punishing sun. Flax dam is a place where water is there and some plants are put inside the pond or dam and this flax rottens. Some lines are omitted, so we have a summary of this. The speaker describes blue bottles, dragon flies, butterflies and the frog spawn emphasizing his special interest in the frog spawn. It is actually a poem of nostalgia remembrance. In his childhood, he used to see this and he used to take some frog spawn from the pond to his house and also to his school. We will see that in the next few slides. First, we have a summary of the omitted part. The boy would collect the frog spawn into jars and keep at home and also take them to the school and see the change into tadpoles. Miss Walls, that is his teacher. Miss Walls would tell us how the daddy frog was called a bullfrog and how he croaked and how the mammy frog laid hundreds of little eggs and this was frog spawn. And there are some more points we have summarized here. One can predict the weather based on the frog skin color. If the frog skin color is yellow, it is sunny, it may not rain and if the skin color is brown, it may rain. That is a kind of knowledge. Irish people had in rural areas. They did not have the entire system we have created for meteorology today. We continue and summarize first and then go to the poem. The curious child became afraid of the frogs invading the flax dam croaking with a menace which made the boy escape from that place. The slap and plop were obscene threats. Some sat poised like mud grenades, their blunt heads fighting. I sickened, turned and ran. The great slime kings were gathered there for vengeance and I knew that if I dipped my hand, the spawn would clutch it. His experience is described here and that is described in terms of like mud grenades. The frogs would attack him and so he would, because of that fear, he would run away. We have the thematic contrast between life and death, nature and human beings, city and village, most importantly childhood and adulthood. This poem actually describes the growth of a young boy into an adult person with an understanding, with an experience. And we have the contrast between decay and growth, hot and cold, invasion and protection, vengeance and forgiveness. 
a large number of poetic devices can be found in this poem. We have a dead metaphor in the heart of the townland, personification in the punishing sun, under the hot sun the flax dam would become rotten and rotten. Onomotopia we have in bubbles gargled delicately, bubbles gargled delicately this kind of sound effect only some poets can achieve. Similarly, we have in a frog spawn that grew like clotted water in the shade of the banks. We have personification in the angry frogs, alliteration in coarse croaking, metaphor in the air was thick with bars chorus, simile in their loose necks pulse like sails, then another simile in some sad poise like mud grenades and lastly we have this hyperbole and personification together the great slime kings were gathered there for vengeance slime kings and the poor boy was afraid and he ran away. We have rhyme rhythm and meter in this poem specifically we do not have any end rhyme in this poem we have this common speech rhythm which arises from this I am and trochee. We have pentameter in this poem because mostly we have 10 syllables and 5 feet almost in every line. The poetic form is blank verse that means we have unrhymed iambic pentameter in all these lines. We also have cesura, enjambment and end stop lines here in this extract. All year the flags dam festered in the heart of the townland green and heavy headed flax had rotted there weighted down by huge swords. All year is an example for this I am, the flax is an example for trochee and then we have this enjambment from the first line the heart of the townland heavy headed flax had rotted there and then lasty full stop that is end stop line. We have an overall impression of this poem here. The speaker recalls a childhood experience of the flax dam decaying throughout the year under the hot sun. Blue bottles, dragonflies, butterflies and frog spawn would swarm around the flax dam. As a schoolboy, he would collect the frog spawn in bottles and keep them at home and also in school where the teacher would explain the evolution of the tadpoles into frogs. Later an awakening came to him about the croaking frogs which threatened the boy who ran away from the dam. Certainly the poem displays the evolution of the innocent and curious boy into an experienced adult with an awareness of fear and disgust in him suggesting the death of a naturalist in the title. Naturalist a person with interest in scientific understanding of nature that particular aspect of him died. The poet has used many poetic devices like alliteration, assonance, onomatopoeia, cesura and enjambment to create a rhythmic effect of joy and also fear in the poem. Let us have the summary of our discussion so far. We looked into the historical and literary context in which Seamus Heaney wrote his poems about Irish conflicts, Irish subjects. We looked into two specific poems, Digging and Death of a Naturalist. While digging refers to the digging of land by his father and grandfather and his own metaphorical digging into his mind for writing poems, the death of a naturalist recalls an experience of the young boy watching frogs growing in a jar in a bottle which threatened him when it came to the flax dam with their croaking sounds. And that is how we have looked into the poems of Seamus Haney. Now we end this lecture with a quotation from uh, Seamus Heaney again. Even if the hopes you started out with are dashed, hope has to be maintained. That is exactly why poets are needed. That is why Nobel Prizes are given to writers who somehow are able to find some hope in this chaotic hopeless world. We have some references for you. Some I hope you will find in some places and read them for further understanding of the digger Seamus Heaney. Thank you.